conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's Dr. Ray dropping in. Uh, by now you know we are in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, for the Odyssey Project in general, for Black Men Lead, for our program for abused and sexually abused and uh, domestically abused females, uh, mental health, and so much more. If you've been following the work I do for years, you you understand uh, my passion for it. You understand my commitment to it. You know that this isn't some spur of the moment thing. We've been talking about this. We've been working on this. We've been investing in this from the research center at the Odyssey Project to the think tank, to program development, program implementation, and community engagement. We've been there. We will remain uh, focused and continue to be there. And we need your support. What I want to talk to you specifically about today is the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage initiative and why it emerged, how it came about, and why it's so important to the overall social health and financial health uh, in the Black community. It's easy to talk. It's easy to take sound bites. It's easy to look at things and make suggestions based off of superficial observation. But what we need are more people who have invested time, energy, and effort into researching and understanding the dilemmas we face, the enigmatic issues we're plagued with, how they work, how they harm us, what is the causality, what is the solution, how do we move in it, creating programs. These are the things we need and these aren't the conversations we're having. We are having who counseled who, who cheated on who, who shot who, and all of that. And we're losing sight of the very nature and the things that are most important to our growth, to our building out, to our survival. Mm -hmm. And Black Man Lead is the result of me researching uh, for the sake of understanding and mitigating African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence. It was me gaining an understanding of why there's so much violence in the community. Crim uh, Criminology 101, Penology 101 shows that anywhere where there's uh, poverty, that's going to be an increase in crime. There's going to be an increase in violence. But I wanted to understand some of the other mental, emotional, social, and economic dynamics at play that uh, create this volatility and hostility at such a high level among African-American adolescent and young adult males. And what I found out is um, outside of the normal natural influences, there are five primary things that impact it. Number one and most prevalent is the feeling of being disrespected. Number two, is the lack of proper racial socialization. They have not been socialized into their purpose. They have not been socialized into their identity. They have not been socialized into their responsibility. Simply put, they're, but they're having an identity crisis. They don't know who they are and they're fighting to discover it without guidance, without leadership, without direction. Number three, the um, 
experience of being physically assaulted. So having been the victim of violence. Number four, uh, the desensitization that comes along with having observed violence. And number five, urban hassle. Urban hassle is all the things that the average inner city kid is going to experience. Gunshots and sirens all through the night. Um, navigating gang violence to get to and from school. Navigating drug use to get to and from school. Navigating the influences of a negative society and experiencing and seeing violence. All of that stuff is happening within every city community. If you live in the, in the Northeast or the Midwest, L trains all the time of the night running by. It's so many different things that are a part of any inner city life that's not a part of the life of the more affluent that leads to putting a child on edge. But the most influential form of intervention comes in socialization. It's hard to direct respect or to mitigate or monitor respect, but there is an African-American adolescent respect scale that allows us to sit up and look at and determine when working with a child their risk of committing, committing an act of violence, when that risk is increasing, when we are able to get it to decrease. And so there's a great deal of specificity in being able to work with kids and mitigate their chance of committing violence, which also mitigates their chance of being incarcerated. We know that also not only does racial socialization of young black males reduce their risk of violence, it also increases their risk of graduating, which reduces their risk of incarceration. It increases their chances of creating uh, the capacity through training and development to earn a living wage and so much more. So it is immensely important that we understand the gravity of this program that I created. It is to give young black males a sense of self, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, a code of conduct and behavior that guides them something that they can take pride in, something that they can see and feel and accomplish honor in. And it's so important to their successes. Um, there are 11 principles of manhood that we teach young black males. The first and, and, and most premier is number one, a black male never harms, mistreats, or disrespects a black female. This includes black females of all ages. This isn't some endorsement on going and mistreating any other uh, female uh, race. Race is simply putting an emphasis on the importance of protecting black females. Uh, a black male takes care of his progeny. That's his offspring. They're your responsibility. We're going to sit up and we're going to find a way that we're engaged in caring for our own. We would love to see us in the home, uh, but in times that we can't be in the home, we still have to find a way to be present. We have to find a way to support. We have to find a way to lead and cover and guide and do all the things we're supposed to be doing as men. A black male always has control of his emotions. This isn't a suggestion that a black man does not have emotions or that a black man is and allowed to feel or that a black man can't hurt or that crying it, uh, black men can't cry. No, it's saying that when we experience any and all of these emotions, we still will find a way to search the deeper recesses of who we are to do the right thing. Uh, a black man strives to build wealth for his family and offspring. That's number five. Number six, a black man understands the importance of ownership and business of businesses and property. Uh, number seven is all a black man is always in a state of learning and growing. We're never going to be satisfied with simply existing or become content with some plateau that we reach. We're striving to be the best version of ourselves. At 55, I'm still striving to grow, still striving to become, still striving to elevate. And that's something that we need to uh, inculcate into the deepest recesses of the souls and psyches of our young black males. Um, a black man takes responsibility for his own actions, number eight. Number nine, a black man seeks wisdom and knowledge from men in great situ 
uh, in greater situations and conditions. That's something we've got to look. We've got to stop uh, allowing ourselves to be intimidated, to be pushed in a place of envy, jealousy, and hatred because of something someone else has accomplished. That's the person we need to seek into. And on the flip side of that, we need to have men who are willing to allow younger men to come into them and learn from them and sit down with them. And that's something we also push on the back end of the deal when we're working with older black men. A black man uh, abides by the standard of excellence, never settling. We're never going to settle for anything but our best selves. Number 11, a black man never makes excuses for his failures, making the necessary adjustments to overcome them. We're not going to always succeed, succeed at everything. We're not going to always hit a home run. We're not going to always be exactly where we need to be doing exactly what we do, but we won't render excuses. We'll say, hey, that that's on me. I'll do better next time. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to discover more. I'm going to be a better person. The goal every day for me when I wake up is to be a better man when I go to sleep at night than the man that woke up. And that takes deliberate, intentional action to go out and find ways to grow, not to sit up and wait on life to deliver something to me. You got to go out and get it. You got to read. You got to study. You got to observe. You got to put yourself in positions and places where there are people who can teach you. And what that means is you can't get caught up in your ego. You can't get caught up in the idea of being the smartest person in the room, the best person in the room, the richest person in the room. I'm always trying to find people who are in a better position than I am in life in every area. Why? Because that's where I glean. That's where I grow. It's not about being the, the, the apex. I know who I am. I'm confident in who I am. Thank God I had people who socialized me and showed me who I am. So I'm not intimidated by greatness. I'm inspired by it. And that's what we've got to get our young man to. Something else I teach uh, uh, in, in, in this program that and I designed into the program is what I call the three, the three P's of, of uh, black manhood. The first one is the black man is the protector. We teach young black males that uh, at birth, uh, those who their peers, same age as them, uh, that are females are going to be pretty much equal physiologically. Uh, there won't be much difference as you guys grow up five, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, there may be a case where they may be faster than you in a race. They may be stronger than you physically. They may even beat you up. But there comes a point in time when you enter into puberty where you start to produce testosterone at a much higher level and your voice will start to deepen. Uh, you will start to outgrow them. You will become physically stronger and you will have this natural natural sense of edginess and aggression that comes with this testosterone. All of this is meant and, and, and created and designed for you to protect them, not dominate them, not exploit them, not overpower them, but to protect them. You move from being their equal to their protector. Before you ever become a provider, which is the second P, you are a protector. Before you develop the skills to be a provider, you already have the physical nature and the physical yearning to be a protector. The thing is, we have to point these young boys in that direction. We have to give them a sense of identity. We need to explain the physiological changes they're experiencing, the emotional changes that come with those physiological changes, and what we need to do with it. We need to also be modeling it in our own lives, modeling it in our relationships. It is immensely important that we do this. The next P is provider. Yes, you are to be a provider, but providing is so much more than money. M providing is the environment. Providing is the clarity. Providing is the support and, and the encouragement and the inspiration and the leadership. So much of that is missed when we talk about providing. We have commodified the black man to the point that it's all about what's in the bank account. And we lose sight of what he is responsible for in so many other areas. And we teach that. We push that. The next is a promoter. It's like, what, the, what promoting got to do with it? A, 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 a black man is not promote using his family to promote himself. He's promoting his family. Man, my wife does this. Man, my wife is great at that. Man, my 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 youngest daughter does this. My oldest son does this. My, and blah blah blah. And they're just they what they're doing is in one instance is planting a seed of positivity, planting a seed of high expectation, building up the self-confidence, building up the self-esteem, but also telling the world who this is. Now, it, it, you don't have to tell everybody, but they need to know that you believe in them. 
They need to know that you're holding them up. They need to know that you hold them in high regard. Next is a priest. And I don't mean this in a religious sense. I mean it in a spiritual sense. The priest is the one that comes before God. These aren't the traditional uh, religious prayers. These are the connectivity of divine. This is the offering and introduction and the bringing of divine nature into the reality and the environment of the family. This is holding God and in, in, in the family in direct connection and connectivity. It is what it is. Then he is a prophet. Again, this isn't a prophet in the sense of somebody's predicting the future. This isn't a prophet in the sense of someone who is speaking into, over, and to those in his home, in, in his periphery. He is speaking power. He is speaking love. He is speaking expectation. He is speaking success. He is speaking to you. He is speaking it into you. He's speaking it over you. That's something that every man is supposed to be doing in his home. He is the sense of identity. He is the sense and the encouragement. He is the provider. He is the protector. And, 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 and he is the creator of the environment that will determine the outcomes and success levels of the people who live under his covering, period. And we move on. And then another thing that we do is we focus on ensuring that we're stabilizing emotional and mental health in these young boys and in young adult males. There's so much more that goes on in the Odyssey Project, but this is just one thing. We've been pushing to get to $10,000 before the end of the weekend, before the new year, and we are far behind. I am challenging you after you watch this video, go into the description box and click. You can click the general link that'll allow you to give to the organization as a whole. You can click the, click the Black, Man link, Black Man Lead link, which will specifically be uh, allocated towards the Black Man Lead program, or you can give by the organization's, give by way of the organization's cash app account, and you can designate when you give, if it's for Black Man Lead or a general donation. But what we need to do is we need to find a way to support the programs that work. Black Man Lead has been on deck for years. It has proven to work we need to get it to a broader audience. We need to touch more communities. We need to be able to create uh, a, a more expansive reach so that we have a greater impact. We want everybody to have this access. I want every community to have a version of this program. Uh, I don't care what you call it. It's not that important to me what you call it, but we need to be socializing these young males. And the problem is that we have, uh, you know, somewhere around 1.5, 1.6, black men missing, meaning that they are not present. Uh, 1.2 million of those, we know where they're at. They're in prison uh, and dealing with a whole other thing. And that, that, that goes to another program we have to reduce recidivism. We are working. We're, we're putting in work. If you want to go to the site and check it out, we're putting in work. The thing is, I'm one person. Uh, I have a group of people who believe in what I do and we go hard in the paint. But we need your help. I cannot stress that enough. You've seen uh, me say this. There's over 2,000 videos on this one channel. That doesn't count the 2,500 that was on the channel before it uh, that got snatched. That doesn't count all the things that you can see in the 25 full-length books and another 30 so books that aren't full-length. And thousands of academic articles and, and tens of thousands of prose. Are, I'm, I've been writing all my life. I've been published. I've been doing these things. Uh, the research thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of research so that we can systematically and with a great level of success create intervention programs that work. All of this stuff is on deck and it should be and we should be pushing it full force because that's our freedom cannon. That's what we fire back at all of the efforts to hold us back. All of the efforts. When you watch other groups, they're not fixated on the things we're fixated on and which keep us distracted. They're not heavily into what's happening in the celebrity world, what's happening in the social. They're about building. Their families are structured so that the challenge is to elevate to each generation. They are structured to consume things that have value. They are con they're structured where they are naturally seeking out things that improve and empower their lives. And we need to put that into our kids. We need to cover our kids. We need to take what we keep uh, designating as our future and literally prepare it and protect it. And we're not doing that. This is my challenge. 
Get behind it. Show some love. This has been going, I've been doing this for more, decades. This isn't new. Just go back and look. This channel replaced the channel before it that had been up for uh, 10 years. Well, almost 10 years. Um, since 2010, I forgot when, when it came down, 2018, something like that. And I had to start all over again and we never got it back going. But what I'm telling you is there, there's nothing but evidence of what we're doing and we need your help. Sit, clicking the like button is great. Subscribing is great. Don't get me wrong. But we need you to reach in and show some love. We need you to donate. I'm challenging every person who watches this to jump on board. Uh, I'm going to be coming back at you consistently. The goal is to hit 10000 this week. So far, we've received one donation of $20. Thank you, Miss Peoples, for that donation. Um, on that note, I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to keep going because I believe in what we're doing. And I'm challenging each and every one of you to become a part of something greater than yourself. On that note, I'm out of here.